NFL Week 13 Preview Show. That's what I'm talking about. I had my in-laws tell me that I sound like a game show host. I don't know if it's a bad thing. We, game we show hosts make a lot of dough, dude. We, I wish I was making some dough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Trebek. We played Cards Against Humanity. With your in-laws? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. My in-laws are great. It, yeah, it was but hilarious. there's a lot of like sex stuff that I don't know that I want to have that conversation with my in-laws. It, trust me, they are a different breed. My in-laws are great. This was hilarious. I, I almost said That's something a, inappropriate some, that I don't want to live on the internet forever, <laughs> and or anyone that I know. No, my find. my in-laws are are fantastic. No, I agree they with love that. These, well, uh, I've met your mother-in-law. I've never met your father. in law yeah. but your your mother-in-law is great. Both of them are super funny. The Cards Against Humanity stuff is, yeah. So we, we had a good time playing that, but I was reading some of the cards, and they're like, Man, you sound like a damn game show host. I was like, huh, well, I can do that. So Listen, NFL Week 13 preview. Pat Sajak ever kicks the bucket. I'm down. Vanna White, me and you, baby. Let's roll. Let's roll. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. <laughs> the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, Fitz Casino, Horseshoe, Gold Strike. You can find out more information on all of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more stuff about us along with our football picks and everything else. Our gambling picks video will be up alongside with this one. Go check that thing out. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. Since you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Help us out. Go subscribe to the podcast. You can listen to that, too. If you don't have time to be on YouTube all the time, we got you on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, all those wonderful things. Just Whatever give you're... a brother a download. Yeah, give us a download. Hit us up. Um, you can also follow us on all of our social media stuff, but that's all at the website, winningcureseverything.com. Let's roll into game number one. The Los Angeles Chargers head okay. into Pittsburgh. The Steelers are a three-point favorite over unders 51 and a half. Sunday, 7.20 p.m. NBC at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. How you feeling? I really wish they would not have played Melvin Gordon last week. I would like to say, now Austin Eckler is a capable, competent running back for the Chargers. But he, he ain't he Melvin is, Gordon. He's not Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon is special. I believe that Melvin Gordon is a top three Running back in the NFL, and and I, I think he does special things. He was not 100 percent healthy. You were destroying the Chargers, the Cardinals, he, the Cardinals. You are the Chargers, and <laughs> you. It is getting late, and you are running these weird. I mean, this was like a triple reverse thing, like yeah. kind of weird play that they were running, and the leg whip kicks him in the leg, and it. Say he's going to miss a couple of weeks, but he should be back before the end of the season. That stuff just scares me. Don't do that with your best player when you're blowing out a bad team. Yeah, there's no sense in that. Uh, the Steelers. Now they're going home. The they Steelers are, are, coming are home. a different team at home. And on top of that, they are like ridiculously good coming off of a loss. Yep. The last three years. Really, it goes back further than that. But the last three years especially. Uh, this year alone, two and zero straight up, two and zero against the spread, coming off of a loss this year. So this is only the third loss. Uh, lines only three at home. If you look at all of the different like major statistical categories, the Steelers are better than the Chargers in all of them. They've played a much easier schedule, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean a a much easier schedule. So some of those numbers are going to be skewed. Um, I love that the Chargers defense has Joey Bosa back now. I mean, he's gotten to tee off on some bad teams to get healthy, get his leg back under him. This is going to be his first real challenge to say, hey, can I wreck this offense or not? So I, I'm not sure which way to lean on it. Um, I mean, I, I'll tell you this. I, I, I do know which way I'm going to lean. Okay. I don't feel super confident in it, but – you the numbers from a gambling perspective, this is in my gambling picks. Yeah, this is in my gambling picks as well. Oh. I'm going to assume that we are going separate ways, oh, that's but we will fun. we will figure that out. That's fun. Uh, let's move on. Game number two. Okay. Thursday night. 
Thursday night football has been awesome this year, by the yeah. way. Well, and, and Thanksgiving Day football was a lot of fun. Like, all that the was, people that hated on Thursday night all these times and tried to say it was a safety thing. No, it was just bad games, just bad matchups. Yeah. When you get good games, all of a sudden nobody cares about the health and safety of the players and, oh, nobody can prepare for Thursday night games. That's all bull. That's bull crap. I agree. This week, we'll see exactly how well they can prepare on a short week. Actually, it's not even a short week for either no, of them. Both, both of them played on Thursday already. So, it's just a full week of practice. Saints are a seven-and-a-half-point favorite traveling from Nolens to the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to Jerry World in Arlington. Over-unders, 53-and-a-half. It's Thursday, 7.20 p.m. on Fox. Seven-and-a-half seemed a little short to me. Against the Saints team? Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. Like, why? I, they are – every week they are – waiting for the Saints to have a letdown. Remember remember a couple weeks ago we thought the Bengals were going to be a letdown. Like, the, Drew Brees is going to play outside on the road. They've been so hot. Like, eventually they're going to yeah. lay an egg. And we figured they're going to do it on the road. And what was it they were outdoors. favored by, like, four? It was, like, four, four. It was a short line. They beat them by, like, 38. I mean, yeah, it was, it was just like a, 51 it was to 14. complete massacre. I and then it was the kind of the same thing with the Eagles, right? Like, I, yes. I thought, all right, well, the Eagles are coming into New Orleans. But that's them coming to New Orleans. I, I wasn't really worried about but that But even one. still, that line was like nine. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it might be a little much. It I was, was looking not even for, close. I was looking for double digits on this one. When I saw it was seven and a half, I just thought this is – the Cowboys have won three in a row. They have not played this caliber of opponent. No. Not even close. <laughs> I mean, there are three wins in a row. Amari or, Cooper had better be a hell of an upgrade if, uh, if you're going to hang. Amari's going to need 300 yards receiving. He's going to need two, three touchdowns. Zeke's going to need 200 all-purpose yards and, and two, two, three, three touchdowns. Because the Saints are scoring six. And and then you're still going to need a few touchdowns <laughs> from somebody else. A couple of field goals on top Whew, of that. Good gracious. Yeah, it it Anyway. Uh, the I, Saints I are the on Saints a run team. right now that is just, I mean, nine straight covers. Yeah. Like, no. it is... The, the, I said it in the recap. They remind me of the 2007 Patriots team where I remember they kept making the spreads bigger and bigger and bigger. It didn't and matter. They, they just up. kept covering. They just kept covering. Like, I, I really care. thought this one would be, like, 10. I was looking for double-digit road favorite, and no. No, it was it was seven and a half, and I thought, you think that hook is scaring anybody? Well, it, it, makes, you, it makes you wonder, like, do they know something we don't know? I like, thought that, and I'm in the mindset of I'm riding this horse until I lose it because I've yeah. rode this horse every week. I've been killing it in my gambling picks for the NFL. I'm not getting off this train until I lose. If this is the week I lose, so be it. Then it all be damned. But I'm riding this horse until I lose. Game number three, you Patriots. This one worries me. The Minnesota Vikings at the New England Patriots. Patriots are a six-point favorite. Over-under is 48-and-a-half. Kind of a, uh, a low total for, for these two teams, I thought. Uh, Sunday, 325 p.m. on Fox. Is that Gillette and Foxborough? Um, I, I think this is a low total because I think they expect the Patriots to be able to slow down this Vikings team. When I think they might expect the Vikings defense to be able to slow down the Patriots. Oh, team. no, there's no doubt. I, I actually think that. Well, the Patriots just aren't help, like. Nobody looks right. Gronk looked like he had a good game, but he's still like real ginger. And he had like he was on a pitch count, like he didn't. He was like on the sidelines sucking oxygen, not in shape because he's missed so many games and he hadn't been able to practice and stuff. James White, same thing. Like all these guys are, all of it's playing weird. a little bit gingerly, but but they're still going out and executing. It, it it's just a little scary for me. Um, love the Pats at home. And th this Vikings team has been the season's yo-yo. Yeah. I mean, we agree on that, right? Oh, 100%. Coming off of that big win, being a Patriot fan, I feel actually decent about this game because if the if the Vikings are going to have a letdown, it's going to be coming off of a big win against the Packers on Sunday Night Football. And that's if they can afford letdowns anymore. Well, Because they they've had so many. I would say they can't afford one. They don't need one, especially if they want to keep path with – uh, the Bears. What are they? They're six, four, and one. No, no, they're they've got more wins than six wins. No, I think they're six, four, and one. No, they 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 got more than that. I double checked that for me, but I I do yeah. like part of me feels like this could end up being like a field Holy goal crap, game either way. Six, four, and one. That's uh, Jesus. Okay. Um, they're not getting the ten. 
I don't think so. I think my 10 bet's over. Um, well, they can only afford to lose one more game. <laughs> so if they, if they lose this one, I think we're pretty much shot. So you and I both had them over 10. We didn't have 10 and a half. We didn't have nine and a half. We had no, dead we, on 10. We had 10. So the best we could hope for right now is, is a push. Them lose this game and push. Or win this game and or win this game and, out. and if they win out at that point, then you know you're you're eleven four and one. If they win out, hang on. But I don't think there's any way. What's their What's the Viking schedule look like? Ooh, at the Patriots, at the Seahawks. Oh God, that's that's brutal right there. Then they got Miami. Then they got at the Lions, and they finished the season against Chicago. They got three teams that are going to make the playoffs that they got to play. And none of those three teams are going to be easy. They're not getting the 10, brother. That yeah, we, I don't think so. I, I didn't piss that money away. Yeah, I think oh, uh, oh, we, we might have a problem there. Okay. Um, I feel like this could be a field goal game either way. Maybe. Um, But we'll see. Like The fact that it's at six, like I could totally see the Patriots winning this one like 31-24. Yeah. You know, going over the 48. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it could just it could be like twenty four to seventeen, like this last week. Patriots could kick their ass. I mean, that, that they, could, I mean they could it, at at Gillette. A, a, they could blow out any team in the country at Gillette. Yeah, I mean, other than maybe the Saints, or the the Chiefs, or the Rams, like anybody else is fair game for a complete blowout. I think you're probably right in that stadium. Game number four: the Redskins at the Eagles. This is the Monday Night Football game. Uh, over under is forty four. The Eagles are a six and a half point favorite. Six Ruben and a Foster, half. more domestic charges brought on him. The Forty ers released him the second the new charges got dropped on him, and, and then the Washington Redskins said, "We got no shame in that game. We're gonna take him right now. Yep. We we need help. We are dying for players. We do not care about morals today." And and. He's another Alabama player, so let's just let's put just, him let's in. Let's just the, bring him in with the rest of these we're guys. We're just going to take the entire 2012 through 2014 Alabama defense and just Don't care if they're everybody. beating up on folks. Just, just get, get, away, get away from San Francisco. Leave the girl there and come here. I guess it would be the 2014 through 2016 yeah. Alabama 20, defense. 2012 would be a little long in a tooth in the NFL. Yeah, it probably that's, would be. <laughs> but 20, 2014 through 2016, that's perfect. Bring them all in. They got Sean Dion Hamilton. They got uh, – uh, who was the uh, Ha Ha Clinton Dix? They got, uh, ha, they got Jonathan Allen. They got Deron Payne. They got Reuben Foster now. Like, they loading up. Loading up on Alabama players. What's up, Washington? The Washington Redskins Crimson Tide. Still six and a half points for the Eagles to be favored over anybody right now is a little weird. Cole McCoy's not bad. I mean, he's he's like a professional backup quarterback. Ah, man, if he keeps throwing interceptions. Nah, he won't keep doing that. I mean, well... Hey, we say that, but good gracious. Over under is forty four. They think sounds this is about be right. A low scoring game. It's, uh, yeah. Neither one of these teams can score. It's at the link. It's gonna be cold. Oh yeah. Boy, it's, it's gonna be cold to be in cold. I mean, it's oh fine. yeah, I know. I, mean, I know. Anybody. Um but I, I do think it'll be cold. Both teams like to run the football. Uh yeah, forty four sounds about right. I I might even go under that. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me if this game comes in under. Um the thing about this Philadelphia team this year. If you get up on them quick at home, their fans are going to lose their mind on their own team, and 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 you've taken home field advantage completely out of play. Oh yeah, all and you so gotta do all is you've got to do touchdown is touchdown score early. one. To- I should I should have been keeping up with this. Has Washington had a lead change yet? Remember a couple of weeks ago we were like, man, we're nine games in this thing, and and the team who scored first never lost the lead and won every game. Have they had a lead change yet? Surely they have. By now. They, weren't they leading the Texans? I don't I have no idea. I don't know that I've watched one second of the Texans. And I'm trying game to until remember the end of the game. The and I should have known if they had a lead and lost it then. I don't. They know. they tied a couple of times, I think, with the Cowboys. So yeah, that, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, that, I I just always thought that was an interesting stat. But oh, it was a very interesting stat. I don't interesting. think there was any way it was going to hold the rest of the year. Um. Either way, they never, they never tied. They never tied. Oh, they. I guess they did tie. At set, Dallas scored seven, and then Washington scored seven. Then Dallas scored three, and then Dallas had the lead the rest of the time. Okay, it looks like. Um, 
I mean, how you feel about that? You think the skins got a chance here? Six and a half. It's not my gambling picks. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I'll be. I'll have money on Washington. Okay. It's not one of my gambling picks, but it's enough to where I like them. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wager them. On. Okay. Game number five. We got the Baltimore Ravens at the Atlanta Falcons. This is a pick 'em. Does that surprise you? No, I, I don't think anybody knows what to expect with Lamar Jackson. He's beaten two real bad teams so far. Yeah. He does have two wins, but he's beaten two really bad teams so far. Now, if he beats the Falcons, did he just beat another really bad team? That's kind of what it sounds I, like I, right I can't now. figure the Falcons out. I mean, they've lost three in a row. With, can they lose four? If the Falcons win this game, it won't shock me either. I, I do think the Ravens are a better team overall. Uh, they have, like, the more veteran defense – um, they're they're the team I guess I trust more. I trust their head coach more. Yeah, over under is forty nine on this one. It's Sunday twelve p.m. on CBS. It's at Mercedes Benz in Atlanta. Um, I could see the Falcons coming out and like rallying the troops and oh, I, I can definitely that. see them getting getting right on this game too. I mean, if Lamar turns the ball over a couple of times, yeah. But I mean, for him to turn the ball over would mean Atlanta would have to do something defensively to like impress somebody. And I don't know that they can do that. Man, they just don't look good at all. Well, no, I mean, they've had so many injuries. You know, it's it's just tough to uh, to wrap everything up. And, man, like, you got to be able to put points on the board if your defense is having trouble. And, and, like, Steve Sarkeesian gone, right? You know what's like crazy? Gone, right? Bells for Sark? Yeah, I mean, he's at, like, I would because you, you need – you have got all that offensive talent. And – you got all these other teams putting that, up. That guy has no business being an offensive coordinator in the NFL. I mean, you got the Chiefs and the Rams and the Saints and, uh, you know, just all these other teams putting up, like, video game numbers. He is the reason NFL teams are going to be skittish to go after college offensive coordinators. Thanks, Sarkeesian. Yeah. yeah. He's going to make NFL teams afraid to do that because – I think he's failed so miserably. You know what would be a think, lot of fun? I think that team offensively is crazy talented. Could you imagine Cliff Kingsbury oh, God, I don't in that spot? That. I don't see that. I mean, a, Atlanta would be rocking, I think. But, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, let's talk about some honorable mentions. Uh, the Rams at the Lions. Rams are 1-6 and six against the spread as a road favorite this year. They're 10-point favorites. That's a big number, too. Yeah, and I mean, not that the Lions are like great by any means, no. but they are three and two against the spread at home. I can't figure the line. Well, I I, I, I shouldn't say that. I know exactly who the Lions. <laughs> They're not really good, but but they might be okay. Yeah, at least for uh, for covering ten points. Like I don't expect them to win the game. No, uh, the Broncos at the Bengals. The Broncos are four and a half point favorites on the road. I don't know that I can trust this Broncos team. Yeah, but I can't trust the Bengals either. Oh, well, anybody with like huge, I, I'm huge staying away the from that game. Hugh Jackson on the sidelines. Ooh. That's just gets down. The Bengals are bad right now. And Andy Dalton, it looks like, is out. Oh, so, yeah. Wouldn't it, is that official? I think that's official. Yeah, then that's. I mean, at, they at that have point. their way with yeah, Jeff the Broncos, Driscoll. The, the Broncos should win. Uh, Driscoll was okay last week. I mean, he wasn't like. He wasn't gangbusters, but he held serve. Uh,. And finally, the Browns at the Texans. That's a pretty good ball game. I think this is going to be a really good game. I did not see a line on this. Did you see a line on this? Yep, there is a line on this. What is it? Well, my bookie had it at seven. At seven. That's it, a big line. It opened, it opened at four and a half. If you go to Vegas Insider, it opened at four and a half. And got bet up to seven. So I couldn't see an opening line on my bookie, but I saw the opening line on Vegas Insider. And then Vegas Insider's current line had him at six. My bookie had it at plus seven or minus seven. That is nuts to me. Uh, Browns are playing well. You're talking about, I was almost at two teams doing, like, looking hot. Like, okay, one team's won eight in a row. One team's won two in a row. Yeah, but the um, Browns are still playing really well. They're playing really well. And if I had to I, – I, I keep betting against Houston – at some point in time, I think they're going to look like Houston again. I mean, they got to, right? I, I just can't – like the Saints winning 10 in a row, that's fine. Like I could see that. If the Chiefs 
strolled off something like that, like I get it. The Patriots have done it in the past. If the Rams like like these but are the elite Texans teams, just eking out wins and it just it just not the ball is a weird shaped ball. At some point in time, it's going to bounce the other way. Yeah, I do agree with that. All right, that is our NFL Week 13 preview. As always, we're giving you some information to go help you be a winner. Go down, put your action in at Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Go over to tunicatravel.com. they got information on all six of their sports books down there. Wonderful stuff. Go check out winningcureseverything.com while you're at it. We're going to get out of this one.